I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're diving into Alexia Franklin's powerful story, a story of resilience and transformation, in her book, From Fear to Peace. In the book, Alexia shares her journey from facing life's darkest challenges to finding inner peace. Today, we will discover simple steps she took that changed her mindset and helped her reclaim her life. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Prime 7 Media for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her amazing book. The links are below this interview. Alexia, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Great to be here, Logan. Wonderful to have you on the show. This is such an inspiring book. Uh, what made you decide to share your story with the world? Because it was the most scary thing I could do. Mm. Um, since I wrote that book, I've had many things that I knew weren't right with me diagnosed. Mm. And I'm only bringing that up because we forget that we change as people. And that's what the book is about. It's about changing that fear. I literally went from pretty wealthy to nothing overnight. There's things in, that aren't in that book because they, they were too painful to actually write about at the time. But what I realized, I've met some of the wonderful people in the world, that any change comes from you. I can only give you an idea in the book. That's one of the first things I say in the book. These are all things I've done. I know they work, but the commitment comes from you. You know that as a presenter, if you want something to go well, it's how you lead the situation. And the same is with life. Whatever challenge you're going through, I will... Imagine having a very comfortable bank account and then finding you've got absolutely nothing there, literally overnight, nothing there. How do you come out of that? And I was, I couldn't put it in the book for legal reasons, but I can say a little bit here. I was actually ill at the time and it was missed. Another reason why I bring that up is because one of the things I talk about in the book is letting go of negative words. And what do I mean by that is I could be really angry with the person who defrauded me. I could be really angry that the doctor missed what was wrong with me. But the change, the start for the change had to come from me because if you don't open up to that change, you're actually pushing situations that can help you away from you. So you basically have to let so, go of that anger in order to let go do. of that fear in order to go into peace. You do. And yeah. I'm severely dyslexic. I'm actually at university now. I'm in my, being my third year in October. Mm -hmm. But I am now diagnosed as severely dyslexic. Mm. I didn't like putting pen to paper. The lady I talk about, Amy, in the book, um, and it's quite an interesting story. I've worked with animals all my life. Mm. And I met this lady with a very frightened dog. And we, I met her again a year later when my fraud had just happened. And I thought, I've got to get out. I've got to move. I felt so ill. I had a job to walk. And this dog was about to drag her under a bus, quite literally. And I grabbed her coat. She said, don't touch the dog, you will bite you. She won't bite me. I work with bigger things than him. And we went for a walk in the park together. That built up a support for me. The dog took to me. That built up a support for the dog. And the dog would only go for a walk if I went each day. He would come to my, because the park was right opposite my house. 
So those little stories hopefully give people an idea of what this change means. At the moment. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about the fraud that you suffered. What happened? It happened to me two ways, and I only talked about it one way in the in the book because I couldn't deal with putting both ways in there. I was actually defrauded partly by a partner yeah. and partly by somebody I met on the net. And that could really make you want to shut down and run away from people. I want to say here and now, don't do that. Yeah, it's when a terrible thing to have your trust yeah. betrayed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I can still go back to that. Mm. Even, I'm going to say that when you contacted me, it's like, should I do this? Okay. Is this genuine? Yeah. Or I followed your work, and yes, it is. But your mind goes back to what it knows. You question everything. Once you've been cheated, once you've been betrayed, once you've been defrauded, you learn that you shouldn't trust so easily. So your body goes into a uh, re vigilant response. Uh, yeah, where it, goes into a kind, it goes into a kind of trauma. Yeah, absolutely. It actually happened to me now because I've had four diagnoses about my health. They're all things I've had all my life. Right, But I'm only bringing this up because I want people to understand what the brain can do mm. and what it doesn't understand unless you teach it. Yeah. Tell us about how your book makes it simple for others to find peace in their own lives. What are some of the things that people should do to find peace in their lives? Go out and help somebody else. Go and be kind to somebody else. But first of all, be kind to you. Mm. And the simple things of doing that, even if you don't feel like it, make sure you eat properly, make sure you drink properly. Mm. I'm not going to say don't ever touch junk food because we'll all do it. Mm. But something I've learned, the less sugary things you have, the more energy you have, the more active your brain is. They don't cost you anything to do. I can actually prove to you that that will make your shopping bill a lot cheaper. And your body a lot healthier to eliminate the oh, sugars, yes. eliminate the processed foods, yeah. eliminate the junk. Yeah. yeah. So you got to take care of your mind. You've got to take care of your body. You have to take care of your soul. You have to look at every aspect of yourself yeah. to find that peace, right? Yeah. Well, your body is your car. If you don't look at, if you, whether you've got an electric car or a petrol car, if you don't charge it in the right way, it's not going to work well. So if you put the wrong food in your body, it's not going to work well. So the lady I talked about, Amy, she actually took me in when I lost my house. Mm -hmm. And she was a pensioner. She hadn't got any money, but she wouldn't take any money from me for a year. Wow. She said, no, you sort your life out first. Very so kind, I made a promise to her that I would let go of that fear and I would move forward. Hmm. I didn't know how I was going to do that. And I said in the book, the day I moved in with her, I was so ill, I didn't know how I was going to get up her stairs to bed. Amazing. Amazing. How did your experience working as a nurse and working with animals influence the writing of this book? It influenced me a lot because I've worked a lot with people with mental health issues and animals that have been mishandled. In fact, I have a little furry friend downstairs now who's been mishandled. And when you watch how people and animals can change, it's totally amazing to see what can happen putting the dog in the story he was so messed up that he was frightened of life well so was I when Amy took me in he if I was there he wouldn't go for a walk with Amy he wanted to go with me what we were actually doing was helping each other 
And yeah. yeah, when you love an animal, that animal loves you back. And that certainly will bring peace and calm and happiness into your life, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It really does. The little friend of mine that's downstairs, she belonged to the gypsies. And I can't say she was ill-treated, but if I got cross with her, she'd literally rip her fur out till she was bleeding. That took a long, it's taken a long time to build that trust with her. Yeah, exactly. What do you hope? That's what we have to do with ourselves too. We have to build trust with the community around us, our friends, our family, our loved ones, uh, particularly after you've been betrayed like you were, and especially after yeah. you've uh, experienced fraud. What do you hope readers take away from the book? What do you hope they learn from it? I hope they find a simple starting point for when they're struggling because I've worked with some of the best people in the world I've been fortunate but you don't always want to have to read the whole chapter of a book to get a starting point um the house I'm talking to you from now was the point of turning my life completely around from the fraud the solicitor that helped me buy this house rang me up about six months after I moved into it and I'd given her a copy of the book. And she said, I've been reading your book every night when I went to bed. I like it because it's short and I can read it quickly in a few minutes. She said, but what I didn't tell you was that a client was suing me. And, I and she wasn't actually in the wrong. She said, I just read your book every night. And they've just, uh, she said, I had to ring you now. She said, they've just rung me to apologize to say it's all their fault and they're dropping the case. Oh. So by changing the way you think, the way you feel, the re way you react to situations change. Exactly. And that doesn't cost you anything to do. I hadn't got any money. So it had got to be something that I could do, like changing your breath. Exactly. Change the way you think, you'll change your life. Absolutely. Yeah. The name of the book we've been discussing today is called Fear to Peace. It's written by Alexia Franklin. In the book, she shares her journey from facing life's darkest challenges to finding inner peace. In the book, you will discover cost-free, simple steps that you can use to change your mindset and reclaim your life, just like Alexia did. Alexia, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. My pleasure. Thank you for asking me. I appreciate your time and your insight, your candor and your wisdom. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight. <laughs>